everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is K.R. Morgan and today I'm going to be talking about LGBTQ plus themes in Cassandra Clare's writing as well as in the TV show Shadowhunters which is based off her books. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Cassandra Clare's writing, she is a young adult author who writes in the urban fantasy genre. All of her writing involves a race called Nephilim or Shadowhunters who, just like in the traditional religious sense of Nephilim being half human and half angel, the, ha the Shadowhunters are a race which is human and they have angel blood. There also exists a group of other races called uh, Downworlders. All of those races basically have some sort of dem demonic influence or blood in them. Cassandra Clare has written three separate series. At this point, she's the third series is currently in progress. The original series is six books long and is called the Mortal Instrument series. Let's see, there's also the prequels called the Infernal Devices, which are set in 1878, unlike the Mortal Instruments, which are set in the present day. The Infernal Devices is also set in London, as opposed to being set in New York, like the Mortal Instruments series. And then she also has a sort of sequel series, um, a sequel to the original Mortal Instruments series, even though it does revolve around separate characters. Um, it's still considered a sequel because it's placed later in time. That series is called The Dark Artifices. It is currently in progress. The second book in the series, The Lord of Shadows, just came out. Well, not just. It came out maybe a couple weeks ago, but I'm about halfway through it. Um, I haven't really had a lot of time to read it. And then she's also going to be doing a... I don't really know how to describe it. I guess the sequel to the prequels <laughs> is the only way I could think about it. So she's going to be writing um, the characters in the... Infernal Devices prequel series that she's did, that she did. She's going to be writing a sequel um, based on the children of those characters, I believe. And that's coming out after this series is finished. There's also talk of her writing a, an adult series based on one of the main char one of the main characters who he runs through all the series because he's a warlock and he's immortal. Um, Magnus Bane, she did write a series of short stories about him just because the fandom is absolutely obsessed with him, myself included. He's just like a really interesting character. But she decided to write a, um, I guess it's a, I think it's a trilogy called The Eldest Chronicles or The Elder Chronicles, I'm not sure. No, The, the Curse, The Eldest Curses. Elder Curses? I don't remember. Something like that. Personally, I'm really excited because it's going to be an adult series, emphasis on adult, if you know what I mean. And the main character is bisexual, so I think it's going to be a really wide variety of his sort of love interests all throughout time, but I think it will also focus on the relationship he has with one of the characters in the main series, um, which is also then a pretty, has become a pretty large focus in the TV shows. So now that I've done a basic overview of her books, I would like to talk about specifically the LGBTQ, or I personally prefer the acronym MOGII, which is Marginalized Orientations, Genders, Identities, and Intersex. I personally like that better because I think it incorporates a wider umbrella without having to just like attack letters on. Um, so I want to talk about how she kind of incorporates characters and themes from that community into her writing. She was one of the first authors that I read as a young adult who incorporated main character, uh, main gay characters, even though it was a, maybe, I don't wanna say quite ahead of its time because you can't really be ahead of the time on something that's been desperately needed for so long, but she was one of, I feel at least, the first young adult authors to incorporate like, not just side characters or mentions, but like main characters who were homosexual and actually like struggled not just with their identity, but with relationships and like relationship issues. So I was really excited that she had done that. So in the main series, there is one homosexual couple. I don't want to, I don't really think it's necessary to say who they are, but they are main characters. Like, I just don't want to spoil it. They are main characters and 
my favorite thing about them is that their relationship issues, while granted, part of it is about one of the characters, like, discovering his sexuality and figuring out how to be a gay person in a society which is very traditional. The Shadowhunter society does not accept uh, marginalized orientations or anything like that. Like, they just are very old-fashioned. So I really liked seeing how the character dealt with that. But in addition, they all, she, Cassandra Clare does a really good job making it about more than that. Like the whole thing isn't just about them being gay. A lot of it is about them struggling through relationship issues that anybody could have. Apparently she's gotten so many questions about the couple from Mortal Instruments about oh who's the top and who's the bottom and she's like just why do people care so much which I totally agree with like it doesn't matter outside of you know outside of the inside outside of sex itself who's the top and who's the bottom like it does not make a difference in who they are like as a person or their capabilities or their role in the relationship and also people can switch which like seems to be like a foreign concept to so many humans I have a secret for you so then in the prequels, I read them a couple times and I really don't remember there being any um, Moji characters in it. Because it's set in 1878, I do think that it is fairly um, period accurate for especially like young, these are like younger characters in the book, they're like young adults, especially for young adults to maybe not necessarily be aware of LGBTQ issues like they're just I think that was kind of non-existent especially in a super conservative shadow hunter community So as I've mentioned the dark artifices are like a sequel series to the original six book mortal instrument series And like I said, there was one main gay couple in that who have grown up and become kind of background or side characters in the dark artifices series So they are still present There also is another another gay couple who was introduced in these books um and then there is two women another couple who are sort of side-ish characters they're related to the main characters so they're important but they're they're not present throughout the books they're kind of like background side figures i haven't finished the second book but personally i feel like i see a polyamorous couple beginning or forming and maybe she'll just have it be like a love triangle. I don't really know. I would love to see a polyamorous couple in these books. I would personally just, I would think that'd be like an amazing step because I don't think polyamory gets a very good representation, especially in young adult books or really anywhere. I feel like young adults are more open to that idea than maybe more like mature adults because I think the idea of monogamy is super ingrained, especially the idea of like getting married to one person and having a family with one person. So I think as you get older, that idea becomes really like enforced. But when you're younger, I think you're more open to the idea of being in a relationship with multiple people. There's also another character in this Dark Artifices series who in this most recent book, Lord of Shadows, he has become more prominent of a character. And I personally feel like I'm seeing him I necessarily struggle with maybe become aware of his sexual identity and I think he's kind of realizing that he's bisexual but it hasn't been stated so I'm not sure but that's just personally how I feel so the shadow hunters tv show is just based on the mortal instruments books however shadow hunters has taken a lot of liberties which I'm not complaining about because it's a tv show they're going to do different things and actually the premiere of season 2b they did like a mid-season break so the second half of the second season just premiered last night. So the TV show does have the character, the couple that I talked about in the Mortal Instruments series, the gay couple, they are prominently featured, especially in the first season of Shadowhunters. Um, one, of the, one of the people in that couple, that character has a real arc about discovering himself and what he wants his values in life to be. I think the show rushed it a lot. I think they probably wanted to get the more liberal queer fandom on their side. So I think they really like rushed into the two characters having a relationship. Because I think they knew the fandom was like, we want them to date, we want them to date. So they just like rushed into it. And I really wish they had taken more time and given the character a chance to like develop. 
especially because there's this whole thing with him like thinking he has feelings for another character in the books and that's like really important in him like realizing that he just thought he had these feelings because they're safe and they just like grazed over that in the show granted i don't think the show was like that high quality i think the show was okay but it definitely does not go as far into the character development as i would like especially with that romantic arc like I said, I think they just wanted to be like, look, there's a gay couple. I don't think they, you know, really thought about putting all the time and effort needed to really develop the characters. So I think they become, I don't want to say quite a stereotype, but I think in the show they kind of become serving a purpose of being like the gay couple. One thing I thought was interesting about the show is that in the books, the fact that they are two men is a big deal. Like in Shadowhunter society, there are not gay couples. Or, like, if they are, they have to hide. Like, that's just not a part of their society. Society does not accept that. In the show, though, they really made it about, like, oh, it's not about the fact that he's a guy. It's about the fact that I don't like him in particular. You know, like, that's kind of how society and the character's family felt about it. So I was really interested in that. Um, I don't know. I didn't really see why they made that change. I thought it kind of changed the way their society seemed. But I think they also have changed a lot about the way society, uh, Shadowhunter society comes across in the show anyway. So maybe that's why they changed it. Because they made the sad Shadowhunters seem more modern. So I think they wanted their opinions on homosexuality to also be more modern. Also, in the show, they, uh, one of the characters, one of the vampire characters in the second season um, comes out as asexual which I thought was really awesome because in the original books, he's not asexual, he's just very young, but they aged him up for the TV show and he says, I'm not interested in sex. And they were like, oh, being a vampire made you like this. And he's like, no, I'm just not. And I was nervous that he was gonna be like, oh yeah, because I'm a vampire and now I'm not into sex. And I was gonna be like, no, but he was just like, no, I'm just not into it. I thought it was really important to incorporate an asexual character because I don't think asexual characters are represented very often. I think they're gaining representation, but if you are someone who is allosexual, someone who is not asexual, then it can be really difficult to comprehend um, asexuality. So I was glad that they at least introduced the concept so that people who had never heard of that before could, you know, become aware of that as an idea and maybe they felt the need to do more research. Something I really like about Cassandra Clare and something that I think for the most part has carried over to the TV show is the lack of queer baiting. Queer baiting is basically something that happens a lot in TV shows where they have two characters who they set up like really clearly, at least clearly to the fandom, <laughs> as having a romantic feelings or sexual feelings about each other like you can just feel clear tension between the two characters but because they are the same gender they do not have them have a relationship officially so obviously they have romantic feelings but the directors don't want them to actually be together so they sort of like keep hinting at the fact that they like each other but they don't actually take the step and make it official because that would be like too much and that would maybe deter fans who have a more conservative outlook and would not, would stop watching if there was a gay couple. So I feel like Cassandra Clare doesn't do that, right? So if there's romantic feelings blossoming between two characters of the same sex, it's addressed. Maybe the character won't necessarily like speak on them or act on them, but I don't feel like she'll like keep us on the edge of our seats trying to figure it out. like. If she wants the character to address their romantic feelings, then they will. Which I appreciate that honesty from the author. The show... It's like... <laughs> the show, yeah, I don't really feel like there's been any queer baiting on the show. Um, I haven't been really looking out for it until recently because I hadn't really become aware of how prevalent it was until recently. But it's possible. I do feel like there's been a couple moments where I've been like, mm, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> so I would like to know what other people think about that actually um, because in my opinion also the show a lot of things aren't even developed enough for there to really be any of that like a lot of relationships don't even get looked into enough for that to happen.
So what I would like to see from Cassandra Clare in the future and the TV show, I would like to see transgender characters or gender fluid characters. Rick Riordan, in his most recent uh, Magnus Chase book, he did a great job introducing a gender fluid character, and I would love to see Cassandra Clare do something in the same vein. I really hope that the relationship I'm seeing in this book does become a polyamorous relationship. If not, I would expect or I would hope from her in the future that she would include a polyamorous relationship. For all that's my feelings about Moji, um, marginalized orientation, gender identity, and intersex characters in Cassandra Clare's books. I would love to know what other people think about this, if they feel like she's done a good job. Um, I certainly don't have the, you know, the most wide perspective. I'm only one person, so I would love to hear other people's perspectives about her, about her books, about the TV show. Um, and just kind of, I'd like to get a conversation going, I guess, about what she could do in the future. I really appreciate the fact that she's not just someone who writes all these characters, but also is like a responsible voice. Thank you so much for watching and listening to what I have to say. Please like and subscribe. You can also check out my Twitter, my Instagram, my WordPress blog. I will link those all below. If you can, I would love for you to check out my Amazon page and look at my ebooks. They're all available. For, well, there's two, but they're available for purchase. And the third is coming very shortly. And then I will be continually writing more books. Those first three are part of a series. And then I will be continually writing more books. So I would just really appreciate it if you could check that out. And you can, of course, comment or send me an email to let me know your thoughts or opinions. I would really love to hear what you all have to say. Thank you again for watching. Keep reading and keep loving. Bye.